Hi, welcome everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce Charlie Kane, uh, um, another person that I know from his graduate student days. One of the advantages of becoming old is that uh, you know all the famous people for a very long time. Uh, Charlie just told me he hasn't been here in 17 years, which is very embarrassing because I not only know him very well, I enjoy talking to him, and of course, like everybody else, I love his physics. Uh, Another reason I'm surprised is that uh, this thing that he has done over the last 10 years, uh, topological insulator, has really uh, created several new fields, uh, not just one, several new fields. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredibly brilliant insight into nature where he discovered purely through thinking, theoretical thinking, there are only some hints before that in nature, in addition to the insulators we all know about, um, a band insulator, because of band gap, Anderson insulator because of disorder, there is a third fundamentally new kind of insulator, which is a Dubnow topological insulator, where the bulk is gapped and insulator, and the edge is a metal protected by symmetry, oftentimes reversal invariance, but could be other symmetries. And all it was a purely theoretical piece of work, very soon people realized, and Charlie did enormous amount of uh, first principles calculations showing that real materials exist, both in two and three dimensions, which have this property. And uh, this system is topological in a particular sense. And I think he may explain some of that tomorrow. Uh, there is a particular index, Z2 index. And this is a, a totally new work, which has excited many communities. He has won many prizes deservedly and will win many more. I certainly want him to win more. Uh, but today, since you will be talking about something that's on um, electron electron interaction effect and fractional Josephson effect, uh, uh, Charlie, some of Charlie's early work when he was a postdoc is on actually the age of fractional quantum pulse system, not in liquid interaction, beautiful work with, with um, Matthew Fisher. And uh, I'm looking forward to this talk because he tells me that this is something totally new. A talk he has not given, which is not easy to do. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Shankar. It's really, uh, yes? Yes. Um, well, it's the greatest movie of all time. Yes, that's right. Um, that, but um, I, I asked my parents this question, and they, um, they, uh, they said no. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So, so it's really a pleasure to, uh, to, to, uh, to be here, visit the uh, University of Maryland. And um, so I thought what I would do for this talk is do some, is, uh, as Shankar said, uh, give a talk that I haven't given before. So this is um, going to be about some work that I've done very uh, recently. Um, and uh, does this work? Yeah, OK. So, um, so in particular, um, uh, I'd like to highlight uh, my postdoc, Fan Zhang, who played a, a key role uh, in this work. Though, um, though this work built on uh, earlier work that I'd been involved with on um, uh, the theory of topological superconductivity, um, uh, and, 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 and this built, built on work with uh, Liang Fu and, and Jeffrey Tio. And so what I want to do is begin by uh, sort of giving you an extended introduction to uh, Majorana on fermions um, and topological superconductivity. And this is, of course, something where uh, here at the University of Maryland, there's been um, a lot of important uh, work uh, that's been done. So I imagine that some of you have heard about some of this um, before, but I'll, but I'll give an, uh, uh, somewhat of an introduction. And then uh, I'd like to discuss one of the consequences of topological superconductor uh, conductivity, which is what you might call the uh, fractional Josephson effect. Um, and uh, this also is something which uh, has, has uh, some of its origins here uh, at, the at the University of uh, Maryland. Um, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask a question, um, what role does time reversal symmetry uh, play 
uh, in the fractional justice in effect. And, and one of the lessons that we've learned over the you know, last decade is that time reversal symmetry often adds a new interesting twist to things. And uh, in this case, uh, it does as well. And I'd like to uh, argue to you that uh, time reversal symmetry leads to a sort of a new kind of uh, justice in effect, which actually has a, uh, a periodicity of 8 pi as a function of the phase, which leads to a, uh, a justice in frequency, which is one quarter of the usual uh, justice in frequency. And, that, uh, and this is really an interaction effect. And if one imagines strong interactions, then this is really associated with the um, uh, tunneling of, of fractionally charged uh, particles. Um, between, um, uh, uh, you know, between superconductors. And, uh, and there's some relation to some very recent work, um, uh, uh, very, uh, very interesting recent work um, uh, relating uh, Majorana modes to uh, parafermion modes. OK, so, um, so that's the plan. So, so let me just start off with uh, a little bit of a discussion of Majorana. So you know, Majorana was a uh, interesting character in the history of, of physics. So he was a genius, but his, but his career was cut short um, uh, when he uh, disappeared on a boat in Italy in 1938. And we, know, we, don't, we, we don't know uh, what happened to him. But uh, we do know that uh, he made this amazing prediction, which is that, so he, this was you know, following the uh, advent of relativistic quantum mechanics and Dirac's equation. And what Majorana realized is that it's possible to, uh, to define the Dirac's matrices in such a way that the Dirac equation is completely real. Okay? And the consequence of that is that it's in principle possible to have a, um, a fermion, a spin a half particle that is its own antiparticle. Okay? And so Majorana realized that this was a, a possibility. And, and so this, uh, you know, it's too bad he, he didn't, uh, wasn't able to see the consequences of this. Now, fundamental particles might be Majorana fermions. Uh, and and there's, there's, there's active um, efforts going on to determine whether the neutrino is a Majorana fermion. Um, but what I want to focus on today is the uh, Majorana fermions that can emerge as um, emergent excitations in condensed matter systems, in particular um, in uh, superconductors. And so, um, so there's some hope. You know, you know, we, I, we often tell the joke that, um, that there's a race between the condensed matter you know, people and the, uh, and the high energy people to discover the um, the, 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 uh, the Majorana fermion, though, though in a sense that joke is not quite right because if we, if we really want to uh, uh, put it that way, then um, the condensed matter um, won that race uh, long ago. Um, because really, um, uh, we're talking about the uh, quasi-particle excitations of a superconductor. And, um, and in a superconductor, um, uh, due to the condensation of Cooper pairs, two electrons can meet each other and annihilate and disappear into the uh, superconducting condensate. Okay, so there's a real sense in which the quasi-particle excitations in a superconductor are Majorana fermions. But what we're interested is in actually is, is something um, a little bit more specialized, which is actually even more interesting, which is the idea that there can be topologically protected zero energy Majorana modes in superconductors. And these give something that's really um, new and exciting. Um, and so, so what, what we realize is that it's possible to have these, um, these zero energy uh, Majorana modes that occur sort of at, that are associated with topological defects in superconductors. Okay? And the simplest version of this is, is a one dimensional superconductor where um, you can imagine that there's some localized states at the end. Okay? Now, um, in the theory of superconductivity, um, one can sort of describe it with a, with, in a, um, with a kind of Schrodinger, one body Schrodinger equation. It's called the Bogolubov Dijen uh, equation. And, um, and what one discovers in that is that there's a spectrum of energies that's kind of like a, um, kind of like a semiconductor. Okay? It has a, it's like it has a conduction band and a valence band, but there's an intrinsic symmetry that relates the conduction band and the valence band so that they're exactly mirror images of each other, which means that if you have a state that's exactly at zero energy, then that state is stuck there. And, and, and there's nothing you can do to make it move unless you make the bulk energy gap close. Okay? And so this zero mode um, uh, has the, the uh, remarkable property that if you add a quasi-particle into it, due to this redundancy, adding a quasi-particle is the same as removing a quasi-particle. It's like it's the particle is its own antiparticle. This is a zero energy Majorana fermion. Now, um, 
Uh, uh, the reason that we are so excited about the zero energy Majorana fermions is because they provide us with a way of um, storing and possibly manipulating uh, quantum information. So if you have a pair of these two, so th th this zero mode is sort of like half of an ordinary fermion mode, okay? And if you have a pair of them, they define a single quantum two-level system, okay, um, which is a qubit. And um, the beauty of it is, though, that this qubit, the, the, the quantum information in this qubit is stored non-locally. So it's sort of shared between the two ends of this uh, superconductor. And, um, and that means that by doing a local measurement, it's impossible to measure the state of this, um, of this, uh, of this, uh, of this, of this qubit. Okay? And that's, you see, that sort of solves a problem because the whole problem with making a quantum computer is trying to keep the quantum computer from accidentally measuring itself. Okay? And those accidental measurements are really kind of going to be local measurements. And so this is a way of preventing the sort of local sources of decoherence. Okay? And so that, that's the motivation for why um, the, you know, there's a lot of excitement, certainly here at Maryland and, and around the world, um, in trying to uh, uh, realize uh, 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 these uh, topological superconductivity. Okay, so the question arises, you know, what is it about this one-dimensional superconductor that guarantees that you have um, a, uh, uh, this, this topological zero mode at the end? Okay, and so this is where the idea of topology enters the story. And so what I want to do is I want to review some of the ideas of topological uh, band theory. First applied to um, topological superconductors and then applied to other um, systems uh, as well. So, um, uh, uh, so, um, so, if, so let's imagine that we have a, a one-dimensional superconductor. So, um, so we can describe it using the BCS uh, mean field theory. And in the BCS mean field theory, you know, you do this, uh, this thing where you, uh, you write the C and the C dagger both on the same side, okay? And so your Hamiltonian then becomes a, uh, becomes a matrix that involves the, um, you know, both the normal terms and also the anomalous terms, which are on the off diagonal, okay? And, um, and as I said before, this, um, when, when you do this, there's this intrinsic symmetry that the, um, that the Hamiltonian has, which is a particle hole symmetry where you sort of exchange the C's and the C daggers. And, um, and so that means that the Hamiltonian has this intrinsic symmetry built into it that H of minus K is related to H of K with some, you know, interchanging the two um, uh, uh, elements of the, of the matrix, okay? And um, so, so this leads to the following question. Um, so in one dimension, I can think of the Hamiltonian as being defined as a function of K, where K lives in the, in the Brillouin zone. And the Brillouin zone, of course, topologically is a circle. Okay, because minus k and k are really the same point in the Brillouin zone. So, so what I have is, the, so what the Hamiltonian is, is it's a, uh, it's a, it's a mapping from, from this Brillouin zone circle into the sort of space of Hamiltonians. Um, and if we have a superconductor with an energy gap, we can ask whether there are, you know, different, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, states that have an energy gap that cannot be deformed into one another. Okay, and so what one learns is that um, that in one dimensional, in one dimension, Hamiltonians with a bulk energy gap fall into two distinct topological classes. Okay, and those distinct topological classes can be distinguished by a topological invariant, which is some measurement that you can do on this Hamiltonian as a function of k. Um, that uh, gives you either zero or one, and, and it's a topological invariant in the sense that you can change the parameters in the Hamiltonian, but um, this Z2 invariant does not change. Okay, the only way this Z2 invariant could change, so you know, because because a you know a zero or one can't change continuously. The only way it could change is if you um, cause the, the the bulk superconducting gap to go to zero. Then you could go through a quantum phase transition where this invariant changes. Okay, so. Um, so, uh, so this uh, two classes of, uh, of, of superconductors, one is the, the zero is, of course, the trivial superconductor. It's just an ordinary one. The one is a topological superconductor. And so this sort of agrees with the notion I had uh, before about, um, you know, uh, the, the, the question of whether you have these zero energy end states or not. 
Okay? And so it's no accident that there are two and only two uh, topolo bulk topological invariants. Um, that's uh, intimately related to the fact that there are two and only two kinds of ends that you can have, those that have the zero mode and those that don't. Okay? And so there's a deep correspondence between these um, uh, between this sort of bulk topological invariant and the boundary topological invariant, which says that uh, you know if you have an interface between between two different topological classes, say the zero and the one, then you have one of these Majorana zero modes bound at the at the interface. Okay, and so that's what happens at the end of a topological superconductor. Okay, so um, so now so this idea of the bulk boundary correspondence ha actually has applications. Um, uh, to many different kinds of uh, topological uh, phases, and and um, so uh, uh, and 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 the, you know so historically, really, the first one that was um, that was understand understood uh, very well is the uh, integer uh, quantum Hall effect. And so you know the integer quantum Hall effect occurs when you have um, uh, you know electrons confined to a plane in a in a big magnetic field, and um, and what you know is you get Landau levels in the bulk, um, but there are edge states. On the boundary, and these edge states are very remarkable. They carry electrons in only one direction. They're chiral edge states. It's sort of like a one-way street for the uh, electrons. Um, and it's this, the, and, and you know, it, in, you know, if you're an electron in the edge state, you have no choice but to go forward, so that uh, the electrical transmission is perfect in those edge states. And that's that's really related to the uh, perfect quantization um, that's observed in the uh, you know in the integer quantum Hall effect. Um, but again, you see, these edge states are a boundary mode, and they are, um, and the number of these uh, edge modes, which connect the valence band to the conduction band at the uh, on the boundary, the number of those, you know, is also something which can't change um, uh, uh, if you smoothly deform the system. Okay, and so, um, so, uh, and and there is a corresponding topological invariant that describes the bulk of the uh, quantum Hall state, which is called a churn number. Okay, and these two integers um, are um, are equal to each other. Okay, so that's the uh, the quantum Hall effect. Now, um, uh, 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 things get even more interesting if you allow for symmetries. Okay, and so um, if you have uh, time reversal symmetry, then uh, that leads to a new phenomenon. So if you have time reversal symmetry, of course, you don't get the quantum Hall effect. Okay, because these edge states don't know wouldn't be wouldn't know which way to go if you have time reversal symmetry. So the churn number has to be equal to zero. But it turns out when you have uh, uh, time reversal symmetry, there is another topological invariant that is protected by time reversal symmetry. And this is the Z2 topological invariant that Shankar uh, mentioned um, uh, at, the, um, at the beginning. Um, and what this Z2 topological invariant distinguishes is it, it t distinguishes a topological insulator from a trivial insulator. The topological insulator has edge states which you can sort of think of as um, uh, uh, like two copies of the edge state of the quantum Hall effect, but one is moving to the right and one is moving to the left. Okay, and so time reversal symmetry is um, is uh, respected in this, and in fact, time reversal symmetry protects the degeneracy where these two bands cross, because usually when you have crossing bands, um, uh, you know they don't cross, um, but this degeneracy is protected by Cramer's theorem. Okay, and so. Um, uh, so, uh, so time reversal symmetry uh, sort of guarantees that that these edge states you can't get rid of them, okay? And um, and so okay, so this is the uh, two-dimensional topological insulator. One could um, so one there's also a three-dimensional topological insulator, okay? Um, uh, so so this is what happens if you have time reversal symmetry. Um, if you have both time reversal symmetry and the superconductivity, so if you have both time reversal symmetry. And the intrinsic particle hole symmetry that a superconductor um, has built into it, then um, then you get yet another phenomena, which is time reversal invariant topological superconductivity. And so, if you have so, for instance, in one dimension, if you have a uh, a superconductor that is time reversal invariant now, um, and um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you ask what could you have at the end? Then what you can have is you could have a Kramer's pair of zero modes. Okay, and so so here um, the uh, you have a pair of zero modes. Um, uh, their degeneracy is protected by time reversal symmetry, and so as long as you have time reversal symmetry, you can't you can't get rid of these. Okay, and so um, so uh, so there's a different 
So this Z2 invariant is different from the Z2 invariant in, that I told you before in the, in, the, um, in the topological superconductor that breaks time reversal and only has a single one of these uh, zero modes. Okay, so this is yet a different kind of, uh, of, of topological superconductor. And so what you can see from this is that you have situations where there are different numbers of dimensions. You know, this is you know, 1D, 2D. I told you there's a 3D topological insulator, 2D. And there's different, um, different kinds of symmetries uh, that you can have. Okay, and these are all examples of what I call one-body topological states. Topological states that you can understand sort of in mean field theory in an interacting system. Um, uh, topological states that are connected, adiabatically connected to non-interacting uh, electrons. Okay. Um, now, uh, uh, so we have all these examples. Actually, in a beautiful uh, piece of work, um, it's, it's been worked out what all of the possible uh, cases of this are. Okay, and so this is work that, uh, you know, goes back to Kitaev and also Schneider, uh, Ryu, Furosaki, and, and Ludwig, where um, they uh, sort of recognize that you, you, can, you can write down all of the possible symmetry classes that you could have, and there, there are more of them. I, I wrote down the ones that I talked about here. You could have, you know, sort of the broken, where you know, don't have any symmetries, uh, like the quantum Hall effect. You could have time reversal symmetry, or you could have, you know, time reversal symmetry and superconductivity. Okay, and you can look at it in all of the different dimensions, and uh, and there's this remarkable pattern of topological classes uh, that you can have. So, so this is the quantum Hall effect. It has an integer topological invariant. This is the uh, the time reversal invariant topological in insulators in two and three dimensions. Um, you know, there's the one dimensional uh, topological superconductor that I told you about. So we have all of these. Uh, uh, topological classes, and, um, and one can understand a lot of, of the structure uh, in, this, um, in this table. Okay, so um, uh, now uh, the problem with topological superconductors um, is um, they're kind of hard to find. Um, uh, so, so, so that doesn't mean that, that people will not discover materials that when they go superconducting are topological superconductors. But most of the superconductors that we know and that, that we have experience with are not topological superconductors. Okay? And so the question... Do you have an opinion on the claims over the last two years of having these materials which are topological superconductors? Which ones? You, you mean the bismuth? Yeah. yeah, well, so... No, I don't have an opinion on that. So, 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 um, uh, so look, it's interesting, okay? And so certainly um, uh, it's desirable to um, have a one-dimensional topological superconductor. But what I want to describe you as a different route to trying to solve the same problem, okay? Which is um, uh, rather than using a topological superconductor, and, you know, the, the sort of, you know, flippant way of saying it is that what I want to do is, is, is I want to have an ordinary superconductor and I want to have some other material provide the topological, okay? Um, and, um, uh, and so um, what we realized is that it is um, possible to combine different, co different materials, combine ordinary superconductors with topological insulators. Okay, so the topological insulators have these protected um, uh, either edge states or surface states. Okay, and, and these, these um, uh, the, the, the edge states of a topological insulator are, they form a one-dimensional, you know, electron system, but that one-dimensional electron system is different than an ordinary one-dimensional electron system. It's something that could only appear at the edge of a topological insulator. And so if by the proximity effect, you can make that superconducting, then um, what we showed is that that leads to topological superconductivity. Okay, and so in particular, if you have the two-dimensional uh, quantum spin Hall insulator, this is the thing with the, uh, with the counter-propagating edge states that I told you be, um, about before. Now, now, notice that it's only a single pair of, 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 of counter-propagating edge states. The up spins are going this way, the down spins are going this way, so it's sort of like half of an ordinary one-dimensional electron system, okay? And so, um, so you might call these, um, uh, these edge states helical edge states, okay? That's a name that's been given to them um, uh, to distinguish them from the sort of ordinary one-dimensional electron system. And so if you make these helical edge states superconducting, then, um, uh, then you know, this becomes a, um, uh, uh, 
something that's like topological superconductor, in particular if you have an interface between where you have a superconducting energy gap and then you break time reversal symmetry and open a magnetic energy gap, then this interface binds um, a, uh, a Majorana zero mode, which is the same as the Majorana zero mode at the end of a, of a, of a, of a one-dimensional topological superconductor. Okay? So, so one can do the, the sort of, uh, you know, uh, have the, you know, the sort of one-dimensional edge state version, or there's also, you could have the two-dimensional surface state of a 3D topological insulator. If you make that superconducting, then you can arrange there to be Majorana fermions on that too as well at, at, at vortices. Okay? And so, um, so this is an in principle way that one can, um, you know, uh, use materials that we already know about um, to engineer these Majorana uh, fermion modes. Okay? Um, now, uh, so one way of doing it is with, uh, uh, with topological insulators, and I'll, I'll describe to you some recent experiments where um, they haven't exactly done this yet, but they've gotten a little bit along the way. Okay? Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, actually here at Maryland, there was, um, you, know, you know, Shankar and Jay Sao and Roman Luchin and, and, and all of them um, had a brilliant uh, idea, which is to, to recognize that actually you don't even really need a topological insulator. All that you really need is these sort of helical bands, which where where you only where, which are sort of like half of a one-dimensional electron gas. Okay, and what they realize is that this is something you can uh, arrange um, not in a topological insulator, but in a more conventional semiconductor that has a Rashba type um, uh, spin orbit uh, interaction, where um, where you then break time reversal symmetry in order to um, lift the Kramer's uh, degeneracies. And so, so they showed that this could happen in a uh, two-dimensional semiconductor uh, quantum well. Um, and, 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 and they also showed that this can happen in a one-dimensional semiconductor nanowire. Okay? And um, so you have this one-dimensional uh, semiconductor nanowire of maybe indium arsenide or indium antimonide. And, um, and you induce uh, superconductivity in it. And the prediction is that it should have these Majorana modes um, at, at its end, okay? And so this uh, 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 proposal actually um, uh, is, is among the most feasible of, the, of, of, these, of these ideas, and this has actually led to some very um, interesting uh, experimental work that I'll describe in a second. Okay, so, uh, okay, which is now. So, so, uh, so, uh, uh, so um, uh, Leo Cowenhoven from Delft, um, you know, is, is an expert at, at growing these semiconductor uh, nanowires. And, and so, um, so he has, uh, 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 you know, done this um, experiment. And so, so what he does is he um, tunnels from uh, a metal into the end of this uh, semiconductor uh, nanowire. And, um, and so what he sees is a, in the uh, tunneling conductance is a, a peak at zero uh, voltage, okay? And with lover's eyes, uh, you can look at this and interpret it as, a, um, as evidence for this Majorana zero mode, okay? Now, um, uh, you know, this is not the end of this story. You know, the, uh, the challenge for Cowenhoven and for, you know, um, for everybody um, is to, uh, you know, um, is to rule out all of the less interesting uh, possibilities for, um, uh, for what the explanation of this zero bias peak is, okay? But, but certainly this is um, uh, a very uh, interesting experiment which has, um, which has uh, excited a lot of people um, uh, to, uh, to think about this. And so one of the reasons I came down here is because I want to, I want to uh, hear from the experts um, about what the, uh, what the status of this experiment is. So Shankar, you can, you can, you can help me with that. So, okay. So, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Another experiment, so, so in the, um, uh, uh, in the, you know, so, so if you want to induce superconductivity um, to, in, to get the Majorana fermions from the, um, uh, from the quantum spin hall state, from the topological insulator, then there's been an interesting experiment very recently by Amir Jacobi, um, where what they did is they, um, they made, um, so they, 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 um, they used these uh, mercury cadmium telluride quantum well devices that uh, Lawrence Mollenkamp uh, invented to, um, to, uh, to, to demonstrate the two-dimensional quantum spin hall effect, the two-dimensional topological insulator. And, um, and so they hooked these up to, um, to a superconductor in a kind of uh, junction uh, uh, geometry. 
And um, what they measured um, is the critical current as a function of the phase, uh, as, as a excuse me, um, as a function of the magnetic field uh, in this in this junction. And so this is a sort of a standard experiment that people do um, in uh, Josephson junctions, which is to observe the sort of interference pattern as a function of the uh, magnetic field. And what they observed is, um, so this is the, uh, you know, the current as a function of the magnetic field, and they observed these oscillations. And what these oscillations show you is that the interference pattern is like a two-slit interferometer, okay? Meaning that if you Fourier transform it, you know, it really is just a two-slit uh, diffraction uh, experiment. Um, if you Fourier transform it, you, you, you know, the current is being carried along the edges, okay? And so what this is evidence for, so they haven't observed the Majorana, there's nothing about Majorana here yet, um, but what they have established is that the, um, the superconductivity is mediated by these helical edge states of the uh, quantum spin Hall insulator, okay? So there's hope that, uh, that one can um, uh, uh, get somewhere with this, okay? So um, uh, now, um, uh, so in this junction geometry, one thing that's missing, though, is, you know, you know in order to have the Majorana fermions, the, these, 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 these zero modes, what I needed to do is to, um, is to uh, uh, put in a magnetic material. They didn't do this. So this, this, uh, this situation um, is a situation that has time reversal symmetry, okay? And so that was the motivation that, um, that we had for going back and thinking about the role that time reversal symmetry plays uh, in these kinds of, of junctions. So that's the motivation for, 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 the, new, what, for the new things that I want to uh, talk about today. And so I'm going to be talking about the Josephson effect. And I realize, you know, coming to the JQI, I'm, I'm sure there are many people in the audience that know much more about uh, Josephson junctions than I do. But, but let me just, just uh, uh, at the risk of insulting the intelligence of those people, let me just uh, remind you uh, what the Josephson um, effect is. So, um, the, uh, uh, so the Josephson effect um, in, in a conventional uh, system uh, arises from the coherent tunneling of, of, of pairs of electrons, Cooper pairs, um, between two superconductors, okay? And so the thing that's important about that is in a superconductor, you can give or take a Cooper pair for free at zero energy, whereas, you know, a single electron, you have to pay the energy gap, okay? And so that means that um, uh, uh, if you have two superconductors, um, uh, you can have tunneling of a Cooper pair, and you're really tunneling between the superconducting ground states of, um, of, the, of the two superconductors, okay? And so, so what you have then, um, and, and so if you do that, then, uh, uh, as a function of the phase difference between the superconductors, then, um, you know, you just in lowest order, you, you, you get uh, an energy, um, a ground state energy, which depends on the, uh, on the phase difference uh, between, between them, okay, cosine, cosine phi, okay? And so that means then if you put a voltage across, you get the AC Josephson effect, where when you put a voltage across, then, uh, you know, the phase then advances as a function of time, okay? Um, and uh, importantly, it advances at a rate 2e over h bar. So this 2 is, is really telling you that the thing which is coherently tunneling is a pair of electrons, okay? And, um, and so this gives you the, uh, the AC Josephson effect where the, um, the current then, you're going to get an AC current which, um, which goes at this uh, Josephson frequency, which is 2e um, uh, v over h bar, okay? So this is just the con uh, conventional uh, Josephson effect. And so you can ask the question then, well, what kind of Josephson, Josephson effect would you have um, uh, uh, between uh, two topological superconductors, okay? And so you get something um, that's new, something that you might call the fractional Josephson effect, okay? And so, um, so this actually, this idea of the fractional Josephson effect, um, uh, again, goes back to uh, Kataev. Um, uh, when he sort of introduced this idea of Majorana modes and topological superconductivity. Um, I think that, uh, I think that the, um, the, the, though, though Kataev didn't call it the fractional Josephson effect, I think the first person who called it the fractional Josephson effect was uh, Viktor Yakovenko, actually. Um, and, um, uh, and so the idea is the following, that um, if you have a uh, topological superconductor, then um, uh, you can tunnel individual electrons um, 
with no cost in energy. Okay, because we have the uh, the Meyer on a zero modes at the end, you can take out an electron for z with with zero energy. So individual electrons can tunnel coherently between the um, the uh, the two superconductors, and that gives rise to a different kind of Josephson effect. Okay, and. Um, so uh, now, uh, so I can think about the, 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 the spectrum of states. So, so I have these two Majorana zero modes. And if I couple them together by electron tunneling, then that splits them into a pair of, of, of zero modes. OK? Now, um, uh, now the thing, though, is, is that um, if I change the phase difference, then there's an interference effect that happens. So remember, I told you that the, um, that the Majorana zero modes adding the quasi-particle and removing the quasi-particle are exactly the same thing, OK? They connect, they, they, they give the same state, OK? The particle is its own antiparticle. That means that if I tunnel an electron to the left, I connect exactly the same states I connect if I tunnel an electron to the right, OK? So I have these two tunneling processes, tunneling an electron this way, tunneling an electron this way. They connect the same two states, which means they interfere with each other. OK? So if I want to figure out the, uh, the amplitude for that process, I have to add them and square them. But, the, but those two processes, if I change the relative phase between those two superconductors, I change the relative phase between those two processes. And when the phase difference is pi, they destructively interfere with each other. OK? So there's no coupling uh, when the phase difference is pi. OK? And so what happens is that, um, uh, you get this pattern of the, the zero modes that sort of cross like this. And you get this crossing, and this crossing is something which is really topologically uh, protected. Okay? And um, it's actually easier to understand the topological protection of this, um, of this crossing if you think, rather than ter in terms of the single particle, uh, you know, Andreev bound states that you have in this superconducting junction, if you think about the... Um, the many body states, OK? So the many body states you obtain by, by you know, populating these single particle states with, uh, with uh, you know, if I, if I populate all of the negative energy single particle states, then that's the ground state. Um, and then if I, uh, then I could put one quasi particle in or something like that, OK? And so if I compare now the, uh, the, the, the many body spectrum, then what you can see is that, you know, I have the lowest state and the first state. And uh, what happens is they cross each other, and there's this level crossing that occurs because of, because of this level crossing. OK? And th you see, that level crossing is, is protected because it's impossible to connect these two states, because these two states differ in the number of uh, fermions there are at the junction. OK? And so the, 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 um, the uh, now, of course, the, the number of electrons isn't conserved in a superconductor because I can add or subtract Cooper pairs. But the number of electrons is conserved mod 2. So whether if you have an even or an odd fermion parity, that is something which is conserved. And these two states have opposite fermion parity. Okay? And so this crossing here is something which is uh, protected by the uh, local conservation of fermion parity. Okay, and so what one has is one, as one advances the phase between these two superconductors is um, there are sort of two states that are sort of mixing among each other. Okay? And those two states are distinguished by their fermion parity. There's the even fermion parity and the odd fermion parity. But when I advance the phase by 2 pi, they interchange their identity. Okay? So you know, when I advance the phase by 2 pi, everything comes back to itself. The Hamiltonian does, but the two states do not. Okay, um, and so what this leads to is, um, I, if you imagine, you know, slowly advancing the phase, you know, then then uh, then I don't come to the ground state here. When I get to two pi, I'm in the excited state. I don't get back to the ground state until I get to four pi. Okay, and so um, this Josephson effect, if I imagine an AC Josephson effect, where um, where you know I apply a voltage so that the phase advances, okay? Um, then you know I go through this uh, junction here, go, go through this degeneracy, and so this leads to a Josephson frequency that has half of the um, of the of the usual Josephson frequency, okay? And so it's EV over H bar, and now you know this E really is 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 reflecting the fact that what's happening is you're actually tunneling electrons uh, between 
uh, between, between these two superconductors. It's not 2E, it's E, okay? Um, now, of course, you know, uh, so one, if you want to observe this, uh, this Josephson effect, um, you need to, you know, there, there's, you have to be careful um, uh, that, uh, that, you know, while you're up here, you don't fall down, okay? And um, so, uh, now, of course, if you're at zero temperature and there are no quasi-particles around, then that's protected by the conservation of fermion parity. But if there are thermally excited quasi-particles around, then you might, you, you, you might find a quasi-particle from the bulk, and then that could fall in there, and then, then you, that would allow a transition down here, okay? And so, um, so that fact is, you know, will make observing this, one has to require some experimental in ingenuity in order to, 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 to observe this, okay? But, but nonetheless, um, you can see in the spectrum that there's the, the, there are these two states, okay? Um, now, um, uh, so Kitaev had the original idea of doing this for, you know, just, you know, sort of a model one-dimensional topological uh, superconductor. Um, uh, you can also uh, do it for the, you know, quantum spin hall edge state, um, uh, you know, uh, provided you put this magnetic material which gaps the, um, gaps, gaps the edge states uh, in between here, okay? Then you have these Majorana modes which are coupled in the same way uh, as these, okay? Now, so there's something special about um, uh, about these um, uh, about this uh, uh, this edge state. So so remember, we we when we go through two pi, the Hamiltonian comes back to itself, but the ground state does not. Okay. So um, so so what is it? And that and that's something which is topological. Okay. And so um, one can think about how you would describe that topologically. There must be some topological invariant that characterizes not the Hamiltonian at a, at each point. You see. The Hamiltonian at each point is, not, is topologically trivial, okay? But somehow the cycle is topologically non-trivial. And so, so there's another topological classification problem, okay? Which is um, rather than just classifying H of K, okay, we can ask a, classify a family of H of K, which is H of K and phi, where now K and phi, rather, you know, rather than having it just be defined on a single circle, <clears throat> It's defined on a on a on a torus set, okay, and um, so so this actually leads to a slight modification of the of, of the classification problem, um, uh, but it's actually a minor modification. So what my student Jeffrey Teo and I showed is that if you classify these um, these sort of topological pumps where you have you know so under the time reversal symmetry you know the k changes sign but the phi does not. Okay, so you have particle hole symmetry for every value of phi, then um, then uh, the classification is really the same as the classification on the Kataev table, except the dimension. Instead of being just the number of values of k that you have, which maybe is one in a one-dimensional uh, system, um, it's the difference between the number of values of k and the number of parameters you have. Okay, so that rather than being this topological invariant, it's actually it's actually the the d equals zero one. Okay, but it's really sort of the same uh, topological invariant that you have in, in the in the uh, in the Kitaev uh, table. Okay, so that's uh, so that's one way of thinking about this uh, topological uh, uh, fractional uh, Josephson effect. Now, the question I want to ask, though, is is what happens if you have time reversal symmetry? Okay, and um, so so what happens if we take away this um, uh, this magnetic material? And so so we started the way we started with this is we actually started with thinking about the topological classification problem. What if we have this this um, this this uh, you know Hamiltonian as a function of k and phi, and now I impose time reversal symmetry and ask what are the new topological classes that you might get in that case? I thought that might be a way of thinking about this problem. And what we found is that actually something something new happened that we didn't completely expect. Um, uh, what we found is that, uh, so we can solve this problem of, of classifying, you know, time reversal invariant families of, um, of, 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 of Hamiltonians. Um, but something uh, new happened. Um, so so the, the, the superconducting phase has this kind of strange property. It's a mag, you know, the phase comes from a magnetic field, so it's odd under time reversal symmetry. But it's even under the particle hole symmetry because we have the particle hole symmetry for each value of, of phi. Okay, and so this variable is kind of a kind of a you know uh, funny variable, which actually makes it the, makes this into a new uh, topological classification problem. 
okay, that's different than the old one. And it turns out that uh, if, you, if you analyze what the topological classes for this um, is, then it, it, you get something which is not like the classifications on the, on, on the, on the periodic table. It's actually Z2 cross <coughs> Z2. There are two different Z2 invariants, okay? Um, and uh, so we scratched our head on this for a while, trying to figure out what it means. You know, there was some mathematical type calculation we did to figure this out. And so, so what this means is that there are actually two different ways you can get time reversal invariant fractional Josephson effect. Okay? So, and, and, and in the end, it actually kind of makes complete sense that this is the way it is. So, so one way you could do it is you could couple together two time reversal invariant topological superconductors. Okay, so, so they each have Kramer's pairs of Majorana states at the end that are protected by time reversal symmetry. Okay, then I can couple them together. So now I have four Majorana modes. And, you know, when, the when I have, when I have um, uh, uh, you know, phase difference is zero, I have time reversal symmetry. So they come in Kramer's pairs. They also have Kramer's pairs at, at phase difference pi. Okay, um, but, uh, but then they mix together. Um, you know, as I advance the phase. And so, so there's, there's lots of different degeneracies here. The blue ones are Kramer's degeneracies. The, re, the, the ones that aren't blue are protected by Fermion parity conservation, okay? And so, so this is the sort of, you know, and, and if you think about it, um, notice that in order to come back to yourself, you have to go through two cycles. So this is a, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of a, a four pi periodic, um, uh, 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 time reversal invariant Josephson effect, okay? Um, but the, uh, the situation that we were really interested in from the start was thinking about this quantum spin hall type Josephson junction, and so that has a different kind of pattern, okay? But, um, uh, you know, and, and so the, uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, non-interacting band theory predicts that it has a spectrum that looks kind of like this, okay? So now you see, though, that, that um, uh, that, so that maybe there shouldn't be a Josephson effect because um, because now if I imagine you see because you know the, these these uh, these these uh, states as a function of phi they stick to the um, to the to the valence band and the conduction band okay so you can imagine you know if I start off in the ground state then uh, then I'm then you know I have all the all the negative energy states are filled and then if I turn up the phase then when I cross through this, then I'm going to have a quasi-particle up here. But then, then that quasi-particle goes up, it keeps going up until it gets to the, uh, to the bulk energy gap. And then that quasi-particle just sort of, you know, radiates away in the bulk. Okay, so, so I've created dissipation. Yeah? Was this also the true in the long junction limit? Yeah, I'll, I'll, so, yes. Okay, so using the BCS uh, mean field theory. And in the BCS mean field theory, you know, you do this, uh, this thing where you... Uh, you write the C and the C dagger both on the same side, okay? And so your Hamiltonian then becomes a, uh, becomes a matrix that involves the, um, you know, both the normal terms and also the anomalous terms which are on the off diagonal, okay? And, um, and as I said before, this, um, when, when you do this, there's this intrinsic symmetry that the, um, that the Hamiltonian has which is a particle hole symmetry where you sort of exchange the C's and the C daggers and, um, and so that means that the Hamiltonian has this intrinsic symmetry built into it that H of minus K is related to H of K with some, you know, interchanging the two um, uh, 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 elements of the, of the matrix, okay? And um, so, so this leads to the following question. Um, so in one dimension, I can think of the Hamiltonian as being defined as a function of K, where K lives in the, in the Brillouin zone. And the Brillouin zone, of course, topologically is a circle, okay? Because minus K and K are really the same point in the Brillouin zone. So, so what I have is, the, so what the Hamiltonian is, is it's a, uh, it's a, it's a mapping from, from this Brillouin zone circle into the sort of space of Hamiltonians. Um, and if we have a superconductor with an energy gap, we can ask whether there are, you know, different, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, states that have an energy gap that cannot be deformed into one another, okay? And so what one learns is that, um, that in one dimensional, in one dimension, Hamiltonians with a bulk energy gap fall into two distinct topological classes, okay? And those distinct topological classes can be distinguished by a topological invariant, which is some measurement that you can do on this Hamiltonian as a function of K, um, 
that uh, gives you either 0 or 1. And, and it's a topological invariant in the sense that you can change the parameters in the Hamiltonian, but um, this Z2 invariant does not change. Okay? The only way this Z2 invariant could change, so, you know, because, because a, you know, a 0 or 1 can't change continuously. The only way it could change is if you um, cause the, the, the bulk superconducting gap to go to 0. Then you could go through a quantum phase transition where this invariant changes. Okay? So, um, so, uh, so this uh, two classes of, uh, of, of superconductors, one is the, the zero is, of course, the trivial superconductor. It's just an ordinary one. The one is a topological superconductor. And so this sort of agrees with the notion I had uh, before about, um, you know, uh, the, the, the question of whether you have these zero energy end states or not. Okay? And so it's no accident that there are two and only two uh, topo bulk topological invariants. Um, that's uh, intimately related to the fact that there are two and only two kinds of ends that you can have, those that have the zero mode and those that don't. Okay? And so there's a deep correspondence between, these, um, uh, between this sort of bulk topological invariant and the boundary topological invariant, which says that uh, you know, if you have an interface between between two different topological classes, say the zero and the one, then you have one of these Majorana zero modes bound at the, at the interface. Okay? And so that's what happens at the end of a topological superconductor. Okay? So, um, so now, so this idea of the bulk boundary correspondence ha actually has applications um, uh, to many different kinds of uh, topological uh, phases. And, and um, so, uh, uh, and, and, and the, you know, so historically, really, the first one that was um, that was understand, understood uh, very well is the uh, integer uh, quantum Hall effect. And so, you know, the integer quantum Hall effect occurs when you have, um, uh, you know, electrons confined to a plane in a, in a big magnetic field. And, um, and what you know is you get Landau levels in the bulk, um, but there are edge states on the boundary. And these edge states are very remarkable. They carry electrons in only one direction. They're chiral edge states. It's sort of like a one-way street for the uh, electrons. Um, and it's this, and, and you, know, it, in, you know, if you're an electron in the edge state, you have no choice but to go forward so that uh, the electrical transmission is perfect in those edge states. And that's, that's really related to the uh, perfect quantization um, that's observed in the, uh, you know, in the integer quantum Hall effect. Um, but again, you see, these edge states are a boundary mode. And they are, um, and the number of these uh, edge modes, which connect the valence band to the conduction band at the, uh, on the boundary, the number of those, it, you know, is also something which can't change um, uh, uh, if you smoothly deform the system. Okay, and so, um, so, uh, and and there is a corresponding topological invariant that describes the bulk of the uh, quantum Hall state, which is called a churn number. Okay, and these two integers um, are um, are equal to each other. Okay, so that's the, uh, the quantum Hall effect. Now, um, uh, 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 things get even more interesting if you allow for symmetries. Okay, and so um, if you have uh, time reversal symmetry, then uh, that leads to a new phenomenon. So if you have time reversal symmetry, of course, you don't get the quantum Hall effect. Okay, because these edge states don't know, wouldn't, be, wouldn't know which way to go if you have time reversal symmetry. So the churn number has to be equal to zero. But it turns out when you have uh, uh, time reversal symmetry, there is another topological invariant that is protected by time reversal symmetry. And this is the Z2 topological invariant that Shankar uh, mentioned um, uh, at, the, um, at the beginning. Um, and what this Z2 topological invariant distinguishes is it, it t distinguishes a topological insulator from a trivial insulator. The topological insulator has edge states, which you can sort of think of as um, uh, uh, like two copies of the edge state of the quantum Hall effect, but one is moving to the right and one is moving to the left. Okay, and so time reversal symmetry is um, is uh, respected in this, and in fact, time reversal symmetry protects the degeneracy where these two bands cross. Because usually, when you have crossing bands, um, uh, you know they don't cross. Um, but this degeneracy is protected by Cramer's theorem. Okay, and so um, uh, so uh, so time reversal symmetry. Uh, sort of guarantees that that these edge states you can't get rid of them, okay, and um, and so okay, so this is the uh, two-dimensional topological insulator. One could um, so one there's also a three-dimensional topological insulator, okay, um, 
Uh, so, so this is what happens if you have time reversal symmetry. Um, if you have both time reversal symmetry and the superconductivity, so if you have both time reversal symmetry and the intrinsic particle hole symmetry that a superconductor um, has built into it, then, um, then you get yet another phenomena, which is time reversal invariant topological superconductivity. And so if you have, so for instance, in one dimension, if you have a, uh, a superconductor that is time reversal invariant now, um, and um, uh, uh, you, know, um, uh, you ask what could you have at the end, then what you can have is you could have a Kramer's pair of zero modes. Okay, and so, so here um, the, uh, you have a pair of zero modes. Um, uh, their degeneracy is protected by time reversal symmetry. And so as long as you have time reversal symmetry, you can't, you can't get rid of these. Okay, and so, um, so, uh, so there's a different, so this Z2 invariant is different from the Z2 invariant in, that I told you before in the, in, the, um, in the topological superconductor that breaks time reversal and only has a single one of these uh, zero modes. Okay, and so this is yet a different kind of, uh, of, of topological superconductor. And so what you can see from this is that you have situations where there are different numbers of dimensions. You know, this is you know, 1D, 2D. I told you there's a 3D topological insulator, 2D. And there's different, um, different kinds of symmetries uh, that you can have. Okay, and these are all examples of what I call one-body topological states, topological states that you can understand sort of in mean field theory in an interacting system, um, uh, topological states that are connected, adiabatically connected to non-interacting uh, electrons, okay? Um, now, uh, uh, so we have all these examples. Actually, in a beautiful uh, piece of work, um, it's, it's been worked out what all of the possible uh, cases of this are, okay? And so this is work that, uh, you know, goes back to Kitaev and also Schneider, uh, Ryu, Furosaki, and, and Ludwig, where um, they uh, sort of recognize that you, you, can, you can write down all of the possible symmetry classes that you could have, and there, there are more of them. I, I wrote down the ones that I talked about here. You could have, you know, sort of the broken, where you know, don't have any symmetries, uh, like the quantum Hall effect. You could have time reversal symmetry, or you could have, you know, time reversal symmetry and superconductivity. Okay, and you can look at it in all of the different dimensions, and uh, and there's this remarkable pattern of topological classes uh, that you can have. So, so this is the quantum Hall effect. It has an integer topological invariant. This is the uh, the time reversal invariant topological in insulators in two and three dimensions. Um, you know, there's the one dimensional uh, topological superconductor that I told you about. So we have all of these. Uh, uh, topological classes, and um, and one can understand a lot of, of the structure uh, in this um, in this table. Okay, so um, uh, now uh, the problem with topological superconductors um, is um, they're kind of hard to find. Um, uh, so 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 that doesn't mean that that people will not discover materials that when they go superconducting are topological superconductors. But most of the superconductors that we know and that, that we have experience with are not topological superconductors. Okay? And so the question Do you have an opinion on the claims over the last two years of having these materials which are topological superconductors? Which ones? You, you, you mean the bismuth? The materials, yeah. yeah, well so no, I don't have an opinion on that. So, 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 um, uh, so look, it's interesting, okay? And so certainly um, uh, it's desirable to um, have a one-dimensional topological superconductors, but what I want to describe you as a different route to trying to solve the same problem, okay? Which is um, uh, rather than using a topological superconductor, and, you know, the, the sort of, you know, flippant way of saying it is that what I want to do is, is, is I want to have an ordinary superconductor and I want to have some other material provide the topological. Okay, um, and, um, uh, and so um, what we realized is that it is um, possible to combine different, co different materials, combine ordinary superconductors with topological insulators, okay? So the topological insulators have these protected um, uh, either edge states or surface states, okay? And, and these, these um, uh, the, the, the edge states of a topological insulator are, they form a one-dimensional, you know, electron system, but that one-dimensional electron system is different than an ordinary one-dimensional electron system. It's something that could only appear at the edge of a topological insulator. And so if by the proximity effect you can make that superconducting, 
then um, what we showed is that that leads to topological superconductivity. Okay, and so in particular, if you have the two-dimensional uh, quantum spin hall insulator, this is the thing with the uh, with the counterpropagating edge states that I told you be, um, about before. Now, now notice that it's only a single pair of of, of, of counterpropping ed edge states. The up spins are going this way, the down spins are going this way. So it's sort of like half of an ordinary one-dimensional electron system. Okay? And so, um, so you might call these, um, uh, these edge states helical edge states. Okay? That's a name that's been given to them um, uh, to distinguish them from the sort of ordinary one-dimensional electron system. And so if you make these helical edge states superconducting, then, um, uh, then you know, this becomes a... Um, uh, uh, something that's like topological superconductor, in particular if you have an interface between where you have a superconducting energy gap and then you break time reversal symmetry and open a magnetic energy gap, then this interface binds um, a, uh, a Meyer on a zero mode, which is the same as the Meyer on a zero mode at the end of a, of a, of a, of a one-dimensional topological superconductor. Okay? So, so one can do the, the sort of, uh, you know, uh, have the, you know, the sort of one-dimensional edge state version or there's also, you could have the two-dimensional surface state of a 3D topological insulator. If you make that superconducting, then you can arrange there to be Majorana on fermions on that too as well at, at, at vortices. Okay? And so, um, so this is an in-principle way that one can, um, you know, uh, use materials that we already know about um, to engineer these Majorana uh, fermion modes. Okay? Um, now, uh, so one way of doing it is with, uh, uh, with topological insulators, and I'll, I'll describe to you some recent experiments where um, they haven't exactly done this yet, but they've gotten a little bit along the way, okay? Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, actually here at Maryland, there was, um, you, know, you know, Shankar and Jay Sao and Roman Luchin and, and, and all of them um, had a brilliant uh, idea, which is to, to recognize that actually you don't even really need a topological insulator. All that you really need is these sort of helical bands, which where where you only where, which are sort of like half of a one-dimensional electron gas. Okay, and what they realize is that this is something you can uh, arrange um, not in a topological insulator, but in a more conventional semiconductor that has a Rashba type um, uh, spin-orbit uh, interaction, where um, where you then break time reversal symmetry in order to um, lift the Kramer's degeneracies. And so, so they showed that this could happen in a, a two-dimensional semiconductor uh, quantum well. Um, and, 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 and they also showed that this can happen in a one-dimensional semiconductor nanowire. Okay? And um, so you have this one-dimensional uh, semiconductor nanowire of maybe indium arsenide or indium antimonide. And, um, and you induce uh, superconductivity in it. And the prediction is that it should have these Majorana modes um, at, at its end, okay? And so this uh, 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 proposal actually um, uh, is, is among the most feasible of, the, of, of, these, of these ideas, and this has actually led to some very um, interesting uh, experimental work that I'll describe in a second. Okay, so, uh, okay, which is now. So, so, uh, so, uh, 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 so um, uh, Leo Kauenhoven from Delft, um, you know, is, is an expert at, at growing these semiconductor uh, nanowires. And, and so, um, so he has, uh, 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 you know, done this um, experiment. And so, so what he does is he um, tunnels from uh, a metal into the end of this uh, semiconductor uh, nanowire. And, um, and so what he sees is a, in the uh, tunneling conductance is a, a peak at zero uh, voltage, okay? And with lover's eyes, uh, you can look at this and interpret it as, a, um, as evidence for this Majorana zero mode, okay? Now, um, uh, you know, this is not the end of this story. You know, the, uh, the challenge for Cowenhoven and for, you know, um, for everybody um, is to, uh, you know, um, is to rule out all of the less interesting uh, possibilities for, um, uh, for what the explanation of this zero bias peak is, okay? But, but certainly this is um, uh, a very uh, interesting experiment which has, um, which has uh, excited a lot of people um, uh, to, uh, to think about this. And so one of the reasons I came down here is because I want to, I want to uh, hear from the experts um, about what the, uh, what the status of this experiment is. So Shankar, you can, you can, you can help me with that. So, okay. So, um, uh, 
Um, uh, uh, another experiment, so, so in the, um, uh, uh, in the, you know, so, so if you want to induce superconductivity um, to, to get the Majorana fermions from the, um, uh, from the quantum spin hall state, from the topological insulator, then there's been an interesting experiment very recently by Amir Jacobi, um, where what they did is they, um, they made, um, so they, 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 um, they used these uh, mercury cadmium telluride quantum well devices that uh, Lawrence Mollenkamp uh, invented to, um, to, uh, to, to demonstrate the two-dimensional quantum spin hall effect, the two-dimensional topological insulator. And, um, and so they hooked these up to, um, to a superconductor in a kind of uh, junction uh, uh, geometry. And um, what they measured um, is the critical current as a function of the phase, uh, as, as a fu excuse me, um, as a function of the magnetic field uh, in, this, in this junction. And so this is a sort of a standard experiment that people do um, in uh, Josephson junctions, which is to observe the sort of interference pattern as a function of the uh, magnetic field. And what they observed is, um, so this is the, uh, you know, the current as a function of the magnetic field, and they observe these oscillations. And what these oscillations show you is that the interference pattern is like a two-slit interferometer, okay? Meaning that if you Fourier transform it, you know, it really is just a two-slit uh, diffraction uh, experiment. Um, if you Fourier transform it, you, you, you know, the current is being carried along the edges, okay? And so what this is evidence for, so they haven't observed the Majorana, there's nothing about Majorana here yet, um, but what they have established is that the, um, the superconductivity is mediated by these helical edge states of the uh, quantum spin hall insulator, okay? So there's hope that, uh, that one can um, uh, uh, get somewhere with this, okay? So um, uh, now, um, uh, so in this junction geometry, one thing that's missing, though, is, you know, you know in order to have the Majorana fermions, the, these, 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 these zero modes, what I needed to do is to, um, is to uh, uh, put in a magnetic material. They didn't do this. So this, this, uh, this situation um, is a situation that has time reversal symmetry, okay? And so that was the motivation that, um, that we had for going back and thinking about the role that time reversal symmetry plays uh, in these kinds of, of junctions. So that's the motivation for, 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 the, new, what, for the new things that I want to uh, talk about today. And so I'm going to be talking about the Josephson effect. And I realize, you know, coming to the JQI, I'm, I'm sure there are many people in the audience that know much more about uh, Josephson junctions than I do. But, but let me just, just uh, uh, at the risk of insulting the intelligence of those people, let me just uh, remind you uh, what the Josephson um, effect is. So, um, the, uh, uh, so the Josephson effect um, in, in a conventional uh, system uh, arises from the coherent tunneling of, of, of pairs of electrons, Cooper pairs, um, between two superconductors, okay? And so the thing that's important about that is in a superconductor, you can give or take a Cooper pair for free at zero energy, whereas, you know, a single electron, you have to pay the energy gap, okay? And so that means that um, uh, uh, if you have two superconductors, um, uh, you can have tunneling of a Cooper pair, and you're really tunneling between the superconducting ground states of, um, of, the, of the two superconductors, okay? And so, so what you have then, um, and, and so if you do that, then, uh, uh, as a function of the phase difference between the superconductors, then, um, you know, you just in lowest order, you, you, you get uh, an energy, um, a ground state energy, which depends on the, uh, on the phase difference uh, between, between them, okay, cosine, cosine phi, okay? And so that means then if you put a voltage across, you get the AC Josephson effect, where when you put a voltage across, then, uh, you know, the phase then advances as a function of time, okay? Um, and uh, importantly, it advances at a rate 2e over h bar. So this 2 is, is really telling you that the thing which is coherently tunneling is a pair of electrons, okay? And, um, and so this gives you the, uh, the AC Josephson effect where the, um, the current then, you're going to get an AC current which, um, which goes at this uh, Josephson frequency, which is 2e um, uh, v over h bar, okay? So this is just the con uh, conventional uh, Josephson effect. And so you can ask the question then, well, what kind of Josephson, Josephson effect would you have um, uh, uh, between uh, two topological superconductors, okay? And so you get something um, that's new, something that you might call the fractional 
Josephson effect. Okay, and so um, so this actually this idea of the fractional Josephson effect um, uh, again goes back to uh, Kataev. Um, uh, when he sort of introduced this idea of Majorana modes and topological superconductivity, um, I think that uh, I think that the, um, the though, though Kataev didn't call it the fractional Josephson effect. I think the first person who called it the fractional Josephson effect was uh, Viktor Yakovenko, actually. Um, and um, uh, and so the idea is the following: that um, if you have a uh, topological superconductor, then um, uh, you can tunnel individual electrons um, with no cost in energy. Okay, because we have the uh, the Majorana zero modes at the end, you can take out an electron for z with with zero energy. So individual electrons can tunnel coherently between the um, the uh, the two superconductors, and that gives rise to a different kind of Josephson effect. Okay, and. Um, so uh, now, uh, so I can think about the, 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 the spectrum of states. So, so I have these two Majorana zero modes. And if I couple them together by electron tunneling, then that splits them into a pair of, of, of zero modes. OK? Now, um, uh, now the thing, though, is, is that um, if I change the phase difference, then there's an interference effect that happens. So remember, I told you that the, um, that the Majorana zero modes adding the quasi-particle and removing the quasi-particle are exactly the same thing, OK? They connect, they, they, they give the same state, OK? The particle is its own antiparticle. That means that if I tunnel an electron to the left, it's, it's a pair of backscattering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I told you yeah, about, right? yeah. The question is the following. So um, how does effect depend on the length of insulation region? Because I suppose that the wave function will decay exponentially. Well, the length, so, so the, the, the tunneling, the amplitude for this process, will depend exponentially on the length. So should, this insulation region should not be too long, otherwise. Well, otherwise, otherwise, um, yeah, the, the, yeah. The yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's just like an ordinary Josephson junction. If you make the if you make the barrier too thick, then the Josephson energy is too small. Yeah. So basically, I wonder, you know, like how many unit cells, roughly speaking, is reasonable to have this? Uh, well, so the yeah, so so what you need to yeah, so of course it depends how big this this energy gap is, and and now now you know in the mercury telluride, I don't think the interactions are strong enough to give you this this energy gap. Okay, so so I'm so so I think one's going to have to if we're going to make this happen, um, then it's going to have to be in some some different system where where the interactions are stronger. But no, I didn't. No, I don't think it will. So no, but the thing. So so what you need is you need an edge state that that has a shallower velocity. Okay, and you know there are other systems that may you know, mercury telluride isn't necessarily the only place to have the, the fractional quantum Hall effect. So 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 you know, look, I mean, I, I sort of threw this out here because I think it's kind of cool, <laughs> but um, but uh, but 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 it's not immediately um, applicable to the mercury telluride structure. Well, certainly there's an interesting question of what happens if you add interactions in the higher dimensional uh, 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 situations. That, that's absolutely. Um, now, I don't think it's going to be exactly the same as the Josephson effect. But, um, but certainly that's, you know, the question of adding interactions and asking what new things can happen um, due to the interactions, um, I think, is a very interesting one, which people have only just started to answer those questions. So there's, there's, there's room for... Uh, Yeah, well, so yeah, so that's another talk I could have given. But, but um, so, so if you have the surface of a topological insulator, if you have very strong interactions, it is possible to open an energy gap without having it be a superconductor and without breaking time reversal symmetry. But the price is, is that you have some correlated uh, fractionalized state at the surface. So yeah, that's, yeah. Alejandro. Well, no. You, so, so the so the tunneling term, of course, you know, it's it's this, right? C dagger. You know, you, so you're adding an electron into uh, into here, right? 
And so that means that 0 and n have to have opposite fermion parity. So that's the selection rule. Right? I mean, if you add, if you add 1 to an even number, it's going to be an odd number and vice versa. Could you follow up on a question that Victor asked during your talk? So you got asked to be a periodic table because you were able to have the sort of k and theta sort of uh, yeah. differently yeah. Uh, under symmetries. So you know there's this work now by Paul Kovnikov and collaborators where instead of using kx and ky, they just use sort of different parameters in the Hamiltonian as your sort of manifold. Uh, so can you now construct sort of whole entire new periodic table? Well, no. But so, so, so in a sense, um, you know, uh, in a way we did that even back here where we thought of k and phi as parameters. Right. Okay. And so, um, so, so, you know, what we had done before is we had analyzed the case. You see, there are two different kinds of symmetries. There's time reversal and particle hole, okay? And so what we had done before is we'd an analyzed the case where, you know, everything, all of the parameters behave the same way under those symmetries, where they're all Ks, or you have one, one which is even under those symmetries and one which is odd, okay? And you could have any number of evens and any number of odds. Okay, and, and so what we showed was that you get the original table, but it's just, the, but the effective dimension is the di difference between those two. Okay, so, so in a sense, in those cases where the, the, the number of even variables and the number of odd, you just have even and odd variables, then, then that's the original table with a slight modification. So, so I think what we have shown is that there's, it's possible to have a new kind of parameter that is kind of uh, schizophrenic. It doesn't know whether it's even or odd because, because it, it, it's, it's both, depending on which symmetry you have. And, and that makes the topological classification a little bit different. Okay. So that was something I think was new. Okay, I think that let me remind people that, uh, of course, Charlie will go to lunch with all the JCA people. Uh, and 4 o'clock, there is this uh, JQIT. Is that in this room? No, it's over there. And someone, I think Jay will have to make sure that he comes over here and goes back. You will take care of it? Okay, Jay will take care of it. So students can ask him more questions on that one. Let's thank Charlie for a very similar. Thank you. Thank you. Not all of the students who are shy asking questions at 4 o'clock.